we're slowly slipping away from that time that we had with the beta the past two weekends, and we're drifting more so out to the theoretical sea in terms of the unknown, and leading up until when we end up hitting land, that being when we get the full launch of World War II on November 3rd. Looking back, we've taken a look at some quirks. We've talked about things that I would love to see change for the full launch of the game, but one thing that I don't think that I've yet to do is talk about some of the awesome things that really went unnoticed and were kind of just unsung awesome pieces of detail that World War II had. So in this one today, I want to take a look at five things that really showcase Sledgehammer's attention to detail in Call of Duty World War II. So these, of course, won't be necessarily anything that is game changing, but are some things you may have overlooked that you may have come in contact with in your everyday gaming over the past two weekends with the beta. And there are smaller, minute details that are really just trivial, but I think are absolutely awesome. So that said, let's jump right into this five things here at this. Now, the first thing is one you guys may very well have noticed for yourselves, and this deals with more so a little bit of the grits and the dirt of the game, because if you ended up jumping into, say, a puddle of mud, whether that be on Point to Hawk or another map in which there are some mud piles or dirt piles, if you dive into those using the dolphin dive mechanic, this is something where your character and then your weapon end up becoming a little bit muddied, whereas you actually get splashes of mud and dirt all over your character model and your weapon model as well on top of that. Something that we haven't really seen too much of that much attention to detail with different mechanics like that in previous titles. Sure, there's been some here and there, but of course, this level of it really pays attention to how much of the area around you is muddied. At what area you hit, you actually get more mud on you than in some other areas, but overall, I think it's just something that once again is a super cool little attention to detail for this that really could have gone without being like that, but they decided to put it in. Now, the second one I want to talk to you guys about actually deals with a little bit of a sense of realism in terms of you can use this as a tip, but also it's something that is a cool little fun mechanic that if you've used it, I'm sure you've come in contact with at this point, but this deals with the airdrops, the care packages, and their parachutes. If you end up shooting the parachute as it starts to descend down, it drops the care package immediately basically acting as if a real bullet would shoot through a parachute, it would lose its effectiveness, and it would drop like a rock. So, once again, not necessarily something that needs to have that sort of effect, but they ended up putting it in there for whatever aesthetic purpose, and I think that it works out very well. It's a nice little tip, once again, if you get a care package, it can speed up the process a little bit for you guys, but once again, just a cool little detail I thought was pretty awesome. Now the third one is one that I found pretty cool, but one that some people found to be quite irritating as well, but this actually deals with every weapon in Call of Duty World War II, not just a specific few. When you take a look at it, there isn't just one sort of fire animation for a weapon. There's actually a different handful for each type of weapon that you have, each one also being tailored somewhat to their own unique properties in terms of the muzzle flash and other things alike. And when you take a look at them all side by side, you can tell exactly what I mean here with this. Now, once again, while it might be annoying to some people, it also, to me, showcases the lack of the air quote copy and paste mentality that everybody always loves to associate with Call of Duty. Whereas each one of these was designed, whether some are reused in some areas or not, there's a bunch of different animations and effects for each individual weapon, which is absolutely awesome once again, that totally could have been overlooked. Now the fourth thing I wanna mention here actually deals with the death animations with a specific sort of death. And this is one that I actually came across randomly in a couple of games, but it caught my attention because it's just so out of the ordinary and I kinda had to do a double take at one point because it just didn't register in my mind what happened. But if someone ends up getting killed by an explosion, whether that be a glide bomb or a grenade or something like that, every so often the character model will writhe around in pain for a couple of extra seconds after the character respawns. So if you end up walking past somebody that say did blow up, they end up having that extra animation allotted to it, to which it's kind of like a post death sequence, which is really interesting because some of them are longer than others. They're almost that complete random. It seems like from the couple of times that I've seen it happen in the games that I've been right next to somebody or come close to being in contact with somebody. But it was something that again is a nice little piece of detail that 
does not have to be there, it does not have to affect the game in any way, shape, or form, but it still is. Now, that's gonna round us into the fifth and final thing here, which does actually help gameplay a little bit. And we talked about this on, I think, the episode of the five things that you might not have known about World War II, and this deals with the grenade indicator, and it's one that, once again, offers up a little bit of a helpful tip. If you end up seeing a grenade indicator, not only does it have the attention to detail that it showcases whatever grenade it is, whether that be a MK2 frag, an N74 sticky bomb, or a German steel hand granada. Depending on whatever model the character is using, it will showcase that icon in the grenade indicator, but also it'll give you an extra little bit of a warning that if it is in the range of doing damage, the grenade indicator will be red, and if it's not going to deal any damage, if it's outside of where that range will hit you, or if it's like on the other side of a wall that you're close to or something similar, it will be a blackish gray indicator rather than red. So again, that sort of little thing, those two little intertwined pieces of detail don't have to be there, but Sledgehammer put them in and I think they're actually a great little addition here to this. But that said, that's not gonna wrap it up. Once again, we've talked about some quirks, we've talked about things that I'd love to see changed, but I figured let's do a little bit more of an upbeat one, a little bit more one that focuses on the cool things that you might not have noticed. So that said, that's gonna conclude the five things to showcase Sledgehammer's attention to detail in Call of Duty World War II. So let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Did you guys notice anything for yourselves that I did not put in this one that you guys would maybe like to see in a follow-up video? Do you think that these don't necessarily matter to the game? Do you not necessarily care? Do you love that they put that much time and effort into the small things? Whatever it may be, let me know down there in the comment section down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed, and if you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe to stay updated with everything we have here regarding Call of Duty World War II. We're gonna be killing it up until the release, and of course, then afterwards as well. So if anything Call of Duty World War II related interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a beat. And finally, if you guys wanna follow me over on Twitter, that is the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. I practically live on Twitter, so if you guys wanna strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said, out of the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Day. Thanks so much for watching. Marzo Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.